Mrs. Ford, can you walk through number one, like how you're doing it? Or tell me what you're doing. Um, putting negative three over, I uh, put them on a number line, negative three over five. Uh, and one. Those are the only two things we can put on the number line because this will not have a zero. Well, it would have to have an I, and we don't want I's. So negative three-fifths makes that zero, and one makes that zero, but nothing makes that zero. This factor is always going to be positive. It doesn't matter what we plug in, that factor will be positive. If you let x be negative three-fifths or one, you will get zero. So the zero values happen at negative three-fifths and positive one. Right? But if that was like x squared plus two, it would be one negative one. No, x squared plus two will never be zero either. Oh, because the, okay, yeah. So that will never be zero, so it doesn't give me a dot on the number line, it doesn't give me a zero, but it will be positive always. So basically what I'm trying to do is figure out where am I going to shade this number line. So the first part of the question says, where is it positive? All right, so let's just suppose it's positive. Let's start picking numbers and seeing where it comes out positive. So let's see, if I pick negative one, I'll just pick negative one, then this would be a negative parentheses. That of course is positive, and this would be negative. So if I multiplied a negative, a positive, and a negative, would that come out greater than zero? Yes. So that means if I am looking for places where it's positive, that's it. That's, where, that's one place where it's positive. Now, let's pick a number in here like zero. If I put in zero, I'm going to get a positive parentheses, a positive parentheses, and a negative parentheses. If I multiply a positive and a positive and a negative, I get a negative, don't I? Don't I get a negative if I multiply all those together? So this section is not positive, it is actually negative. So now I'll try two. Two gives me a positive, and a positive, and a positive. Well, when I multiply all those positives, I get a positive, don't I? So if I'm looking for where it's bigger than zero, it's bigger than zero right there. So my positive intervals are negative infinity to negative three-fifths, and one to infinity. Those are my positive places. My negative interval is negative three-fifths to one. So is there no zero? The zeros are negative three-fifths and one. Because oh, okay. if you put those numbers in, you literally get an answer that says zero. So the zero one would just be zero? No. Negative three-fifths and positive one. Those are the numbers that make the problem equal zero. If you put a one in here, don't you get zero? Yeah. Yeah. So negative three-fifths and one are the numbers that give you zero. 
So when it says zero on the worksheet, you write that in an interval? Negative three fifths and one? No, no, you write X equals negative three fifths, X equals one. It's not an interval, it's two dots. It's these two dots on the number line. Those are the values where it equals zero. Okay, so these dots are where it equals zero, the ends are where it's positive, and the middle is where it's negative. All right, what are you doing with the next one? I factored it. Yeah, that's a good thing. So x plus 5 minus 2, uh-oh, we got a problem on the bottom because the bottom is a squared. And what that means is there's no shortcut here. So we are not going to be able to do this with any kind of shortcut. We're going to have to check every region like we did with the problem I'm erasing. So where will my dots be for this problem? There's going to be three of them because there's three parentheses. Negative five, two, and three? Yep, in that order. They're all going to be open because of the, the symbol in the problem. And now I'm just going to start picking numbers and I'm going to have to pick a number in all of these spaces. So go ahead and pick your numbers and see if you can figure out where the shading happens. Five and two. I think you're right. I'm just checking and that one right now. Let me, let me check this again. So this would be positive, negative, positive. Yep, so in between there works. Yep. Two and a half. Nope, that doesn't work. Oh, that doesn't work either. I think your answer is just negative five to two. So that one rule doesn't apply to this problem? No, because of that. That's what I said. Whenever you have a squared factor, no shortcut. No shortcut. You got to check every single space individually. If we didn't have this squared, it'd be okay. But that squared messes everything up. Okay, what are you doing with the next one? We find the PRRs. Yeah, because it doesn't factor by grouping. It's like the one we just looked at. It does not factor by grouping, so yeah. PRRs are going to be factors of 6 over factors of 2. So let's see. That's a two. I don't know. I'm just going to start guessing. Oh, hi, hi. How about that? I think two works. That is great news. So remember, I'm trying to factor the thing. So two works, so I have a factor that's x minus two. 
I'll put that on my number line in a minute. And what are my other factors going to be? Okay, so it looks like my dots are going to be at negative one, three halves and two. Now notice none of these are squared, so I can do my alternating thing. I just have to find one section so what would you like to plug in? I want my answer to be greater than zero. What, what should I plug in? Should we plug in zero? Absolutely, it's right in here. So that's gonna give me a negative two, a negative three, and a positive one. If I multiply negative two, negative three, and positive one, do I get greater than zero? So I shade it, it worked. Z, we, we checked zero, zero's in this space. It worked, gave me a positive answer. So I shade that. Now, if I shaded that one, then I'll also shade this one out here. Remember, you're allowed to alternate because you don't have those pesky squares. So my answer is from negative one to three halves or from two to infinity. For the last one, do we move the three over and then get a common denominator? Oh, you mean for the last problem? Yes, the last problem is like one of the potential quiz questions. So yeah, it's an inequality. Oops. It's an inequality. It's just like the one we just did. You gotta have a zero. We don't, so we'll move the three. Think of that as three over one. And then, yeah, get a common denominator. Lily, you with us to this point? Yeah. Uh, all right. Got negative 2x minus 9 over x minus 4. Oh, you're already done. Okay, let me catch up. So x minus 4 is the denominator. x plus 3 minus 3x plus 12. I'm getting negative 2x plus 15. Is that what you said? I got my, minus 9. Okay. Oh, oh, no. When you distribute, yeah, it's really tricky. I mean, it's easy to miss. You got to be real careful with your distributive. This is almost always going to be a minus because you've subtracted that number over. So you really have to watch out for that. So I have negative 2x plus 15. Shania, what about you? Yeah, that's what I've got. Okay. So now we're ready to put the dots on the number line. And I know one of them is going to be at 4. But again, if don't just guess. If you're not sure, if you've got something kind of weird like that, go ahead and set it equal to 0 and solve it. And then you'll know exactly where the dot is. Is it 15 halves? Seven and a half. So we have a dot at 15 halves and a dot at four. It's close at 15 halves? Close at 15 halves because of the or equal to. And then I need to, I, this can be another alternating problem. There's nothing weird about that. 
but I don't know where to shape. <coughs> so um, I think I'll just try zero. I like zero personally. Zero's out here. Zero gives me negative 15 fourths. I put a zero in. Is negative 15 fourths bigger than zero? No. No. So I don't shade this section, which means I do shade this one and I don't shade that one. So my answer is four parentheses four 15 halves bracket. Okay. You guys do not need to send that to me. I'll, I know you just did it, so I'll mark it down. Can you do um, number four on the ravine? Yep. Hang on a minute. I want to mark those homeworks down before I forget. My brain doesn't always function fully. Okay. All right, so what's the problem here? Let's see, y equals, no, just x squared, minus three x plus five over x plus two, and I am finding all the asymptotes and intercepts. So I could have a vertical asymptote, some kind of end behavior asymptote, uh, x-intercept and y-intercept. Okay. Well, what do we remember how to find anything? Factor? Um, yes, except I don't think it does. I don't think Isn't there a vertical asymptote of negative 2? There is a vertical asymptote at x equals negative 2, absolutely. There is no horizontal asymptote because these powers don't match. So what do I do? How do I find my end behavior asymptote if those powers don't match? Um, division? Yep. So I'm going to do the division. Just divide the top by the bottom. It's a real simple little problem. And what information does that give me then? What is my end behavior asymptote? Y equals X minus five. Yes, indeed. Y equals X minus five right here. Don't care about the remainder. This is the end behavior asymptote. Good. So do you multiply by whatever the vertical asymptote is or whatever the bottom is, period? Say that again. So like when you're finding the end behavior asymptote, uh -huh. do you multiply the top by whatever the bottom is? I'm not doing any multiplying. I'm doing the I division. I mean divide, divide, sorry. Yes, you divide the top by the bottom, yes. Okay. And when we divide by x plus 2, we put a minus 2 out in the box. And since that's in the denominator, it's automatically going to be the vertical asymptote. Because vertical asymptotes come from making the denominator 0. Now, my intercepts are going to be found by letting each thing be 0. So if I plug in zero for all the x's, I get 5 halves. 
If I plotted that point, it would be on the y-axis. So my y-intercept is 0, 5 halves. Then my x-intercept happens when I let y equal 0. Now when I cross multiply, this way I get 0, and this way I get x squared minus 3x plus 5. We have already established that isn't going to factor. So how am I going to figure out where that equals zero? How am I going to solve that? There are. Um, I could, but I, that's, that's too much work. It's a squared. How do I do squares? Okay. Yeah, I don't PRR squares. I, I PRR cubes and bigger, but if it's a squared, the fastest thing to do is just the quadratic formula. Oh, and this one is doubly bad because notice we get a negative discriminant. We get a negative number right here. So there are actually no x-intercepts because when we tried to let y be zero, we got imaginary answers. And remember, it didn't ask me to graph, but when you're talking about this information, you're talking about the graph. And those came out imaginary. So there aren't can, any x-intercepts. Can we graph so that I can practice the, like the limb, like as x is going towards infinity problems? Um, well, we have everything we need for this one, so I'll just go ahead and graph this one, use this graph because we, we found everything that we need. So I'll have a vertical asymptote at negative two. And an in behavior asymptote. And an intercept at five halves. Now, we said this curve is not going to cross the x-axis. The answers that we got were imaginary. So we got to figure out what does this thing look like. I think it looks like this up here. And then it looks like this down here. So that would be my picture based on all this stuff that we found over here. So then if we want to talk about the limit as x approaches negative 2 and as x approaches infinity, negative 2 from the other side, and negative infinity. So here we go. This says what's happening to y as you get closer to negative 2 from the left. So here's negative 2. This is the left side. So what happens as we get closer to negative 2 on the left side? What are you doing? One downside would be negative infinity. It would be negative infinity. Now this says what happens to y 
as x approaches positive infinity. So that means you're going this way on the picture. This is where positive infinity is. If you labeled your x-axis, there's positive infinity. So as we're going this way, farther and farther and farther to the right, what's happening to y? Approaching infinity? Yep. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. As you go to the right, this picture is going up. All right, now this says what happens as we approach negative two from the positive side. So here's negative two. Now we're coming at it from the right side. Which way do I turn? Positive infinity. Positive infinity. Now, the next one says, what happens as you let x approach negative infinity? So again, negative infinity is the end of the number line. So as you keep going left, 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 left on the number line, what is your curve doing? Continue this picture. Which way is that going? Down. Down, negative infinity. Now this says approaching zero. Now I don't want you to worry about these because zero is not an asymptote. What is zero? A point. And when you are approaching a point, the limit is the y value. So the answer to both of these would just be five halves because that's a point. And limits are y values. So if you are at a point, then the limit is whatever your y coordinate is. Thank you. So we have a quiz on Monday. Yes. And when's our test? We're not going to have a test over this, I don't believe. I haven't decided yet how I'm going to do it. But I only see you guys three days a week. I can't give up a whole day for something. So we're going to have a quiz on Monday, and we'll go from there. We're starting Chapter 3 on Monday. Okay. So we have to print off those notes? You do. If that's going to be problematic, because it's several pages, I mean, it's a whole packet. If that's not going to be workable, I will print it for you, but you'll have to come to school and pick it up. I'm not mailing them. I have a printer. I print them. Okay. Yeah, they're Thanks. already in Schoology. The homework isn't there yet, but it's coming soon. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mrs. Ford. You'll have a good day. You too. We'll see ya.